Good morning. We are going to Lebanon today. <clears throat> Bear with me while I pin this title up here. We're going to Chateau Cafraya in Lebanon with winemaker Fabrice Guiberto, who's going to be here any minute. Nice day outside here in New York. Hi, Raylene. Uh, and I just spoke with uh, Fabrice, and it looks like it's a nice day over in Lebanon, too. Hi, Gabriella. Thank you for joining everybody. I really appreciate it. Um, really interested in this estate. Um, can't wait. Fabrice is great. Um, their Instagram is fabulous. And um, just always a fascinating region. Um, they make a lot of wine too. And it's a big estate. And I can't wait to hear about the biodiversity and agroforestry. Those are two of my favorite things. I like trees are the answer. Um, so that's exciting. Noguera Bernardo, thank you for joining us. Um, hmm. Instagram is always an adventure. Hi, Cognac One. Hi, Carrie. Um, going to Lebanon. I've never been. I really want to go, but I think it's a tough place right now. Um, but the wineries are always so idyllic. All right, Fabrice. I just ate. I had a piece of toast. Toast is my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> um, I know that's lame, but it, it's true. It is. I really like toast. Uh, let's see. See, uh, I'm no Warren Fabrice. You have to be a minute earlier. I start talking about toast on here. There they are. <laughs> Enough to toast talk. New podcast on toast. It is, it is, Carrie. It, it always cheers me up. Hi, Fabrice. Good morning, or good afternoon. Hello, hello, Jeff. So you had to give me a lesson in time that Lebanon is seven hours different. Exactly. It's uh, 5 p.m. now. And uh, oh. voila, so after a while, we will have the, the sunset. And uh, voila, it's a, it's a beautiful weather today. A uh, bit hot, but uh, very nice. Good, good, good. Um, it's beautiful here too. Fabrice, could you start by introducing yourself? I always like to hear how people that are interesting got their interesting jobs. So just a little background on yourself. Oh, it's a, it's a very, uh, it's a very simple story. So I'm French. Uh, I came in Lebanon. I'm from a family vine grower in France for a sixth generation. And uh, so I was born into the vineyard in France. So I started my career working on the field. And after uh, I did some studies to become an enologist and uh, to understand more what to not do in order to protect the terroir and to understand the true value of uh, the earth and, uh, and uh, the expression of the terroir. And so I, uh, I left France when I was 20. 4 years old. I work in Morocco and after uh, I uh, joined the Kefraya to uh, ensure all the technical aspects of Chateau Kefraya vineyard and winemaking. Voilà. So I'm, I'm a vine grower, let's say, okay. no more, no less, and uh, in a very simple way. I, I love it. It's, it's, I, it really fascinates me to hear people's personal stories. Um, before we get into... Um, learning could you just show us around flip the camera and just kind of from where you are show us what we're looking at and where you are alors we are in middle east in uh, in lebanon in beka valley and uh, uh, on the chateau kefraya uh, vineyard i wanted to start this year with these beautiful roses because all these roses has a huge symbolism as a lot of people know um, before roses was used to uh, to um, to detect the the grape disease so it was it was used to to, to detect the disease and uh, in a in a very natural way and for us it's very important because it's a part of our story also and uh, you will understand more in the way we are working why it is here but first i will i want you to show to 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 turn my phone to show you uh 
the beautiful landscape we have because we are at uh, 1,100 meter altitude and it's very particular. So I will turn my phone, just one second, uh, voila, turn my phone, voila. And like this, you will see the landscape, voila. Alors, this is voila, all the landscape. So we are between two mountains, so the sunset is starting. And so we are in the middle of the barnyard. In this way, we have a uh, Baruk mountain. So it's the west part of Lebanon. And just there, just there, I will show you. Here, the mountain you can see front of you is the Syrian border. So the top of the mountain is the Syrian border. So we are making wine at 17 kilometers far from Syria. Voilà. And you can see if we go into the vineyard. So voilà, we are in an organic farming. Voilà. It's completely organic. So we are not uh, using uh, herbicides, uh, pesticides and stuff like this and we plow the soil. So we started to plow this, this, uh, this line here, and after a while, we do this one. So to, 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 to keep the grass in order to do a certain kind of mulch, of mulch to avoid evaporation, because we are not irrigating. Voilà, this is, uh, this is uh, the, the, the point. But after, after a while, I will talk about uh, Chateau Kevraya story and a lot of lot of things because uh, we have a lot of particularities in Kevraya and it's very important. Awesome. Um, just while you're right there, the soil is so red. Can you speak about that for a second? Oh, exactly. Alors, we have a huge particularity. If you see just here the mountain, you will see there is like a depression making like a, a row mm -hmm. at the bottom of the mountain. And this row is the seismic fault of Yamuni. So we have a rift, a rift. So it's the African rift crossing Lebanon from the south to the north and crossing Ovanyard. And this, uh, this, uh, this fact, this fact, made, uh, created a huge diversity of soils and terroir. So <coughs> this, this, uh, this uh, soil movement, millenary ap after millenary, uh, created a huge diversity. And today, Chateau Kefria is, uh, is growing vines on five different kinds of soils and terroir. So it makes us very unique. But this approach is very also important when you know that because we need to know very well our soils and terroir to do the micro selection we are used to do to build our different wines and cuvées. It's very important. And as I told you, it's not irrigated. So it's grow in an organic way, meaning uh, we need to be very accurate to be very accurate, to 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 take the best of our, uh, our land and to give expression to our wines. Uh, I'm used to 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 say uh, for us in Chateau Kefraya, it's to purpose wines that expressing very deeply the characteristic, the soil, the climatology, and the singularity of Chateau Kefraya. Mm -hmm. It's very important to, 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 to have this approach. I want to come back to that, but I just wanted to ask while we were looking at the soil. But um, could you give a broad description of maybe a little bit of history of wine in Lebanon? Because it goes back to the Phoenicians, which I didn't realize until I was reading about you guys. Exactly, exactly. Your question is, is, is very important. A lot of people are, are considering today uh, we are among the new world wine. But it's completely false. Why? Because uh, uh, Lebanon was among the first countries in the world to produce wines. Why? 5,000 years ago, Phoenician was the first 
to spread viticulture into the Mediterranean countries, even in France. And more than that, Phoenician was the first to trade wine between Phoenicia, Phoenicia, all Phoenicia is Lebanon uh, today, uh, with Egypt. So there is a very deep culture of uh, of uh, vines and uh, and wine. But more than that, and especially in Chateau Kefraya, we have till today, till today, in this in this land, if I can do a small zoom, no, I can. Today, um, making wine in Chateau Kefraya and growing grapes, I'm used to tell it's about putting our feet in the step of Roman people. Why? You will understand directly why I'm telling that. You see, just front of us, there is uh, there is a small uh, there there is a, a small forest, and maybe in the middle of the small forest, you can see the roof of the castle. And the castle is built on a Roman tell. A tell was an artificial hill built by the Roman. And the Roman, 2,000 years ago, living, who, which were, who was living here in Kifraya, was used to live in this place and also to be buried in the tomb we have in the middle of the vineyard. And more than that, till today, in Kefraya village, we have a Roman mill, a Roman press. So it means if the Roman built a mill, a press in Kefraya, they wanted to squeeze some grapes. So that's why I'm used to tell making wine in Chateau Kefraya, it's following more than 2,000 years history in this land. And this is why, why also it's important to respect the environment, to find the good balance between climatology, terroir, soils. So the approach needs absolutely need to be natural, completely natural. Less you do, better it is. And in this way, you can express his, the best part of your, of your Java. This is what I think. And this is what people are used to tell in your, in your wine. Uh, so they, 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 each time people are, are, are tasting your wine, uh, they feel something different. And they feel this notion of terroir. And I will give you an illustration directly on the field and you will understand who it is important to know about terroir, to know about terroir. Why? Because even if you feel some stuff, even, even if you feel uh, there is a better quality in a part or in another part of the vineyard, mm -hmm. you need <coughs> to find the good explanation in order to, 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 to let it be reproducible. Okay. And so during, during uh, till now it's more than 10 years, we did a lot of studies in order to understand our terroir and to do um, a mapping of, of the old vineyard of Chateau Kefraya. So what we need, what we, what we did, we ask university, we ask specialists, we ask pedologists, so to do a, a mapping with new technique, satellite picture, with drones, with, a, with new with technology to help us to understand this, this uh, diversity. And now on the ground, I will show you directly what it means. Awesome. You see in this line, here, you have a very deep soil. It's not really rocky, so there is some calcareous. But if you go on the other part, you can see the color is completely different. Yeah. And what does it mean? If I, by example, uh, work this part of the vineyard in the same way as the other, uh, the quality will be completely different. So I need to focus uh, on the notion of terroir. 
So it's the, the main guideline in in the technical approach. It's to follow the terroir before following or own feeling. This is what I, what I want to 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 to, to make people understand. You know. But it's not just the selection of the grapes because it looks almost like where the soil is changing, you've got um, the sunset. So this gets a little less sun also, right? Sorry. This area. Exactly. 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 So, so the level, because because the sunset uh, will be will cover at uh, the west part of the vineyard. So here it will be more protected from the sun to the other part. And by example, during the harvest, I will start by the first part, the end of this line, the end of this line, because the maturity is different according to this part here. Wow. You see? Uh -huh. You can That's see the difference. Yeah. It's, it's quite amazing. And so, if you have a look there, it's mm -hmm. different. That's why today we have almost, uh, let's say, uh, seven, more than 75 micro, micro uh, plot of land. Wow. And how does that play out? Do you, you have 300 hectares, but that's not all under vine. You have some forests and stuff? Exactly. Uh, only the vineyard. Sorry, just one second. Uh, the vineyard is 300 hectares, but the wall, the wall property is more than 400 hectares. That means we have something than more than uh, 100 hectares between forest, between uh, between uh, land, agricultural land, and uh, other uh, uh, roads and stuff like this. And for us, trees are very important. And also, if the founder at this uh, time um, planted this tree, because it was mainly for the wind. Oh. Why? Because the wind is coming from the west. Okay. So the, the, the dominant wind uh, is coming from the west, and the, these trees are cutting a part of the wind. So cutting this part of the wind help us to, 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 to never, to, to, uh, it's avoid uh, to break some branches in the vineyard. Voilà. Okay. And then you you are a big proponent of biodiversity too, right? Sorry, you believe in biodiversity, encouraging different types of plants and animals. Uh, it's more than that. In my in my own way of thinking, it's more than that. Uh, without without biodiversity, you can't do something. And this is why this is why uh, last week we installed we installed the. Uh, uh, bees, bees to do some honey, and to help us to to do fecundation on the grapes. And voila, so we installed bees. Uh, also, uh, if you don't put pesticide, you preserve the environment. You preserve also the biodiversity. Uh, you know, in life, um, uh, this earth is not for us. We are borrow. We, we borrow the land today from our children. So we absolutely need, need to think about that. It's yeah. very important to be aware about that. You know, today, you know, in, the, in life, people absolutely want things immediately. Immediately, they want it now. You know, uh, in life, it's important to be patient. And to be patient, when you plant the grapes, you are doing it for more than 50 years. So you need first to be aware about what you are doing. And each time you are working with nature, for sure you have, you have good surprise, but by times you are losing the crop. By example, in 2015, we lost 50% of the production due to a spring frost. So voila, by example, we don't have irrigation system. If there is no rain, uh, we, will, uh, we will lose some, uh, some volumes. But this is the price to pay for quality and for ensuring or singularity. Wow. And so <coughs> can we take this time to, to talk about the history of the estate? And is that 
the philosophy of the owner or it's what you brought to the place? So maybe just... No, no, it was, it, was, it was the philosophy of the owner because the owner, Michel de Bustros, started, uh, started this project when he was uh, 22 years old. So <coughs> this land before was an agricultural land uh, without grapes. And, you know, when you are 22 years old, uh, when you want to do project, uh, you are maybe you have more sensibility. You you are more enough to take risk than if you are older. So, on this agricultural land, he took in consideration when he was uh, 22 years old to, uh, to 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 ask himself about why there is no grapes here because there was used to grow fruit trees, uh, weeds, stuff like this, uh, uh, cereals, uh, uh, vegetables. And uh, so as you, well, as, as the land, you notice that the land of Chateau Kefraya, by time, are very poor. And a poor soil is a very good soil for the grapes and to produce good wine. And so at this time, 20 years, 22 years old, he had in, in Lebanon, this is the land of Phoenicians. So I was the first to, to spread viticulture in, uh, in the Mediterranean countries. After the Romans came, they built Bacchus Temple in Baalbek. We have a Roman press in Kefreya village. Uh, the castle is built on a Roman tell. That means for sure at one time, of, of this past, they was used to grow grapes. So he decided to plant grapes with nine hectares. And this story will, will explain also the global strategy we have in Chateau Kefraya. Okay. So, so he decided to plant grapes and, uh, the grapes was, uh, successful, very qualitative. So the vineyard expanded. And uh, we were used to, 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 to sell grapes to, to others. So at this time, we were in the, in the 60s, voila, because we started to plant grapes during the 50s. The time to reach a, a small level of production, we needed at this time 10 years. So in, we were in the 60s. The vineyard expanded. The vineyard was older. So during... At the start of the 70s, he asked himself, uh, I'm producing good grapes for others. Maybe it's time for me to produce my own wine with my own grapes. And so at the, at the start of the 70s, uh, he decided to, 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 to start a winery. But, but uh, in uh, 75, as you know, the civil war in Lebanon started. But Michel de Bustros, who he was a very, very strong man, a very, very clever uh, person, he didn't, he, he decided to never stop this project. So the civil war started in 75. We started to build the winery in 78 to do our first vintage in 79. So it means Chateau Kefraya is the only winery to, uh, to, to, to have been created in, during the Civil War. Voilà. Wow, that's, that's and, just wild. And this story explains a lot of things. Why? Because uh, that's why we are not buying grapes. Today, we are, as I told you before, vine grower. We are not negotiating. And this story explain why we, 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 uh, we are who we are. Because uh, the, the winery was built only to transform our own grapes into our own wines, but not to do a wine business uh, from, uh, from zero. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about all the trees you have just passed? Because while you're walking around, I'm kind of looking behind you. Olives. And there's many Olives. different kind of trees. Olives, olives, olives. It are. was olive trees, because also so on the vineyard 
Voilà, so we, we, we planted also gardens. I want to, 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 to make you discover the, because we have also a restaurant in Chateau Kefraya where we are used to, to, to receive people for lunch, dinner. We have uh, wine tourism activities also. And uh, <coughs> so we have uh, uh, olive trees. So we are producing our own oil for the restaurant. Uh, we also harvest some grape leaves to do stuffed uh, oh, yeah. grape leaves for the restaurant. <laughs> and so, because it's very important to have a good environment if you want people to be very quiet and voila, it's better for, uh, for the view. We planted voila, for the, all these uh, this biodiversities for also uh, the, uh, the bees, uh, uh, the nature, the animals, and, uh, and all. Oh, yeah. That's brilliant. Uh, Raylene at Cognac, Cognac One was just like, it's incredible, like being right there with you, getting this tour. It's really incredible. <laughs> no, it's, a, it's, very, it's very nice. But also, we have people here having, uh, having lunch. Uh, <laughs> and, and, nice. and what, what I love so much, it's all these roses. They're mm. beautiful, beautiful. Gorgeous. Wow. It's beautiful. What a beautiful property. Voila. And now I will show you voila, the, this is voila, the restaurant. Voila, the restaurant. And also, uh, voila, we are used to, 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 to propose uh, to, to people to, to taste the wine and, uh, and stuff like this. And we were talking about, um, about, uh, about uh, organic, also about uh, biodiversity, about environment. And you know that we are aging wine into oak barrel, French oak barrel. But because for me, it's very important to not destroy it. We use the oak barrel to do wow. this, well, this, uh, this room. That's amazing. You know, like, no. That is very cool. I've not seen that before. Wow. Voila. And voila. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's just gorgeous. And those are more roses, right? Exactly. Voila. Wow. Wow. And at the sunset, you couldn't have picked a better time. I'm so, so lucky. Wow. Um, Fabrice, so 300 hectares. What different grapes do you grow and how many different wines do you make? Uh, uh, very interesting question. Because, as I told you, we have a huge diversity of sex and terroir and we are... Uh, on five different kinds of geology due to the seismic fault of Yamune. So we are growing mainly in red, in red, uh, in red, um, uh, <coughs> Sierra, Cabernet Franc, Cabernet Sauvignon. We have also some uh, Morved. We have also some, um, some uh, old Carignan, old Carignan planted in, uh, in uh, 56. We have also uh, old Sanso, and Sanso and Carignan are both very important grape varieties for us because this is the part of uh, the story of grape varieties in Lebanon. Because, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, how to explain that, um, even if uh, Lebanon was the first country, was among the first country to produce wine and grapes, the viticulture disappeared during more than uh, three uh, centuries, and uh, the viticulture started back uh, in the middle of um, of the 80th, uh, uh, 90th centuries, and Sanso and Carignan was the grapes coming from North Africa with Jesuit to uh, to create it back the Lebanese vineyard, so it's very important. But uh, in white, to talk about the white, well, we work mainly with um, uh, Viognier, Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc. We have also Merlot, Bay de Mexese, so it's uh, Lebanese native grape varieties. But also, uh, more and more, I am focusing on uh, red Lebanese native grape varieties. Why? Because um, uh, even if uh, today, we propose a very interesting blend. 
uh, more and more, I think we need to to go deeply with other QV, additional QV, based on our own singularity, and our own singularity is also Lebanon. And due to that, we ran a huge study to uh, to discover back and to retrieve the old native Lebanese red grape varieties. So we are doing now experimentation with Aswad Karesh, with uh, Azminoir, with uh, other to 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 start to uh, to 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 show people uh, what is deeply Lebanon if you want to understand more than only uh, the terroir. And also uh, for now four years we age a part of our wine in clay in amphoras. Okay. Voilà, because Phoenician was also used to uh, put the wine in amphoras mm -hmm. to uh, to do the trading between Phoenicia and Egypt. Wow. So we're at a half hour. I don't want to take too much more of your time. Um, so no, it's with pleasure. Think, I want you to think if I've if I've missed anything to ask that we should know. But also, if if I have a Carignan from Kefraya and from Lebanon, say I'm blind tasting it, is there something that's going to clue me into it being different, or how is it unique from other Carignan, for example? What makes Kefra unique is the, uh, the singularity of his terroir. And uh, the main important during a blind test, what you will see directly, you will be shocked about the elegancy and the balance of the wine we can provide. And this is, I think, the stamp, the stamp on Chateau Kefraya. Elegancy, singularity, and uh, and uh, I'm used to say we are doing very deep wines, deep wines that expresses really in a in a very deep way mm -hmm. their origin. And then I have uh, my understanding is that a lot of of agriculture happens in the Bekaa Valley, and so it's fairly fertile. But you said that it's your your land really is not. It's really made. I mean, it's what where grapes are best, right? Sorry, sorry. So I had under I had understood that the Baca Valley is fairly big in agriculture. The whole valley is where a lot of the agriculture is. But um, your property, you said, is not good for agriculture. That's why there's grapes there. And and also, can you explain why you do not irrigate? Because it's a bit of a risk, right? It depends where. Because even if the wall Baca Valley, we have a huge diversity of um, of soil. And by example. Around Chateau Kefraya, by example, if if you draw a small circle of five kilometers around Kefraya village, you will find maybe more than fifty percent of the national uh, grapes uh, production in Lebanon, because this part of Lebanon fits more uh, viticulture. Other other uh, are more used for vegetables, but when Voila, but uh, if if you if you by example, voila, in these five kilometers, but if you go into the small point, you only have very very uh, sm small point, uh, and you can see on the map on the uh, on the geological map, it's it's quite crazy because you see there is something there is something particular. Voila, this is uh, this is why. I love that. I love that. Well, I will let you go. This is really, you're a, you're a philosopher and a great educator. It's been tremendous seeing the estate and learning from you. Is there anything else you want to tell people that I missed out on asking? Oui, um, for me, there is something very important. And uh, today, um, it's very sad. A lot of people think... Uh, uh, Lebanon is only about uh, about by time problems, uh, uh, war about uh, about um, lot. Of, it's a, what to say that it's uh, it's very complicated. But I want to show people that in Lebanon there is something we need to make to 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 show to people. There is something beautiful you can show to people, and Lebanon is. A very strong story. It's also a beautiful landscaping. It's also beautiful people. And uh, for me, what's it, 
what is very important is to to tell um, in Lebanon, you know, um, there is more Lebanon Lebanese people outside Lebanon than inside Lebanon. Okay. And uh, I think uh, more you are curious, more you discover. And I think this is the spirit of Lebanon. We always need to discover. It's the the people that I know from Lebanon are just extraordinary. They're the warmest people I know, and it's just I'm so glad you ended it this way because it's it's there's some tremendous beauty there to share. I, I'm really happy you said that. It's a pleasure to meet you, and I hope to meet you in person one day. It was a sorry, huge, huge or here. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Fabrice. Thank you, thank you, and uh, hi to all the team of Cognac One also because yes. I noticed. Thank you so much. And Savia, yes. Bye thank bye, you. Jeff. Thank you. Bye bye, bye, -bye now. Bye bye.